My experience is getting help has been probably the hardest thing I've ever done. You're unraveling things that you didn't know was this, didn't know was that. You have to confront things that you don't want to confront. And you're doing your best to just learn from it and prevent yourself from falling down that rabbit hole again. Taking that first step to reach out and get help is really, really difficult. So it might be as, as simple as for you reaching out to a friend or a family member, someone that you trust and someone that, who you know cares about your well-being, to have that conversation and let them know how you're feeling. I usually call Olivia, eh? Just call my fiance. Talk to her. Just always helps with everything. It's just like a like a like a grounding point. You've got to find the solution for you. And that starts with talking to your GP, to your practice nurse, or to a counsellor that you trust. Sometimes it's more serious and they need to see a specialist, either a clinical psychologist or a psychiatrist, or even needing medication. So I've been on medication for it for uh, probably close to 10 years, but I have tried to come off um, medication a few times and even if I forget it, it's instant. I'm down, I'm on the ground. I have had people scared to talk to a doctor because they think they'll be forced to take medication. No one can force you to take medication for anxiety. Even if they give you a prescription, you don't have to use it. I remember being offered some, some medication a, a few years ago uh, and I said no and I'm still saying no. I don't personally believe medication is the only answer. It is an answer for some, it's an answer for me. It has been part of my journey, but I absolutely believe that there are other options. What I personally have seen though, is, is that the one biggest option that can help that isn't as easily accessible as talking therapies. We actually found a private psychologist um, who was absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, and um, I saw him for about a year. Um, and I did learn some really valuable ways of thinking that, that have helped me um, sort of cope with the condition. Uh, I've been seeing a therapist consistently now for about a year and a half. Yeah, almost two years. And if I look back to the person that I was a year and a half ago and who I am now, I am, I'm in a lot better space now. I'm a lot more, I would say like mellowed out, like relaxed and more at peace with who I am. Not every counselor, psychologist, psychiatrist is going to be the right fit for you. People have different training. They have different modalities that they use in the way that they practice and of course, mental health professionals are humans as well, so they have different experiences that they bring to the table. I went to a psychologist who said to me, I can see no reason why you would have agoraphobia. And I looked at him and I said, thank you, hopped up, walked out his door, and my agoraphobia all vanished. His suggestion that I would not have agoraphobia was absolutely true. So maybe going to see a professional isn't such a bad idea. A big part of treatment is actually supporting people to move towards anxiety rather than run away from it. There is a lot of stuff that is coming out around finding ways to stop fighting anxiety. Um, there is a lot of ways that can help you by actually finding a way to sit with it. So I was in Sydney and I had just started work with APRA and I was going to be leaving the next day for a plane back to Auckland and I went to reach for the glove box to take out my daddy's Cerapex bottle and I went 
I'm not going to take them. The next day I hopped on the plane and flew to Auckland without any drugs. And as that plane took off, I looked out the window and they said, come and get it. I'm here. Make me freak out. Send me running to the toilet on the plane. Whatever you want to do, I have won. And that's basically what happened. In theory, everyone in New Zealand who would like support with their mental health is able to access that through a publicly funded service. In reality, what that looks like, um, sometimes it's not so straightforward. There are lots of reasons why it can be hard um, to get help. Uh, people who are living in isolated settings, who are living rurally, they're not going to have access in the same way that others do. Uh, some of the systems aren't always set up for for people um, in a way that feels like it is right for them. There's a lot of people struggling with their mental health. It's really hard when you, you want to help so many people. There is not enough um, staff anywhere to resource that need. And I really, really hope that that changes.